Hello everyone again and welcome to another episode of Fist Chat, the vodcast that deals with topics related to film science and technology. My name is Ben Warner and I'm joined again by the affable Stephen Kern for another great chat. How are you doing there Steve? I'm well mate, I'm well, I'm very excited about this one today. Yeah it is, quite, this chat. It is quite exciting. Um, this, is the, uh, this is actually our first uh, vodcast where um, uh, it, uh, to the topic's actually been suggested to us. Um, it's uh, called Snake Oil Science and it was uh, sent to us, they sent an article um, to us, it was from Dave Just Rides on Twitter. And uh, essentially, um, he just uh, sent us a link to an article um, in relation to um, snake oil science and in a broader context, um, how scientists present data and how sometimes they don't quite um, you know, do the best job possible in order to get the message across to the general public. So, And I, I might add there, Ben, that uh, that allows uh, the snake oil salesmen to make up their own like interpretations, results and oh. sell you snake oil. Oh, I'm sure we're going to get to some... Uh, <laughs> I'm, sh I'm sure we're going to get to some fantastic examples later. <laughs> um, but um, just to start with, we'll, we'll just give a brief overview of um, the actual uh, article itself. Um, now, in there, um, the, the basic premise of the article was from the science of sport, and essentially what was happening in there is that the main theme of the article was about how scientists present data, and a lot of them um, actually don't necessarily do the best job possible because they get bogged down in a lot of the technical detail, a lot of the explanations and the terms and all of that, and if you try explaining that to, you know, your average Joe on the street, they're going to go, oh, wait, what the hell are you talking about, kind of thing. And they don't, um, they don't clue in and they lose interest. I mean, like, just as a side example, I mean, climate change is an excellent example of that, I would say. Exactly. <laughs> Poorly explained in the first place and then, you know, it allows other people to step in and say it's all, all rubbish. And, and in a similar way, you know, if you don't explain uh, that really taking caffeine does very little for you, you know, in terms of enhanced sport performance, uh, it doesn't stop all of your great big uh, companies and multinationals from telling you it does and uh, perpetrating the myth that uh, drinking a little bit of coffee before uh, Dave goes out riding perhaps, you know, might enhance his performance. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> uh, the good thing is uh, I, I don't think Dave will be riding to the cafe right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah. Just um, so starting from there. So that's kind of the basic thrust of the article. And one of the examples used in there was um, uh, some. Uh, a, a, it was like a PowerPoint slide about um, uh, vitamins, and it was done in these bubbles. And the the point was that this particular diagram um, actually demonstrated quite simply and clearly how certain vitamins had um, more research and uh, knowledge behind them that had um, better public awareness and uh, which ones that didn't. Um, we'll actually provide that link uh, on Facebook and Twitter so you can check that out for yourselves. Um, so in that respect, um, uh, if we just focus a little bit on, um, again, uh, just on the uh, presentation of that sort of thing, do you think that they had a point in what they were talking about there? That's a long pause because uh, I'm, I'm not really sure. I mean, it's interesting. If you actually do look at the chart, they suggest, uh, and, the, and the chart suggests what uh, additives or elements or, uh, I guess, um, <clears throat> dietary supplements, if you want, like uh, actually improve performance or health, if you like. And they've got, I think, down the bottom is vitamin A, and they say there's uh, no evidence for vitamin A uh, improving performance. Well, if you don't have enough vitamin A in your diet, well then I think you will find that vitamin A becomes a performance enhancing substance. If you eat a balanced diet, no, then probably eating more vitamin A doesn't do very much for you except get you a lot of sunburn. <laughs> and uh, likewise, you know, at the other end of the scale, they've got things like folic acid and vitamin D uh, being shown as having, uh, you know, a lot of evidence for them being good dietary supplements. Now that doesn't mean that taking them is actually good for you. What it means is, is that if you don't have enough of those um, uh, dietary or, or nutritional elements in your diet, well, then uh, you really do need to make them up. And if you do make up those deficiencies, well, then they are you know, obviously performance enhancing because you can perform at your optimal sort of uh, rate. 
So what, what would be, I guess, the question that in my mind is what, what would be the easiest way to figure out if, you know, you're not getting um, those vitamins in your diet or how, how do you know that... You start suffering neurological diseases, <laughs> you know, <laughs> bleeding in the gut, you know, fingernails falling off, that sort of thing, you know, that, is that it, is probably it, is it just, indicates dietary deficiency. Is it, is it just as simple as getting like a blood test or something like that? <laughs> well, it's even simpler. I mean, <laughs> you won't be feeling very well. <laughs> and this this gets on to the point of, uh, you know, does science communicate this or, or some of its findings very well? And science has known and, and science has actually repeatedly said, and I'm sure everyone's heard it, that basically a balanced diet is good, okay? A balanced diet will supply you with everything your body needs. You can take multivitamins, mega multivitamins on top of a balanced diet and you've probably heard this said as well all you'll have is expensive urine because it's going to go straight out mm -hmm. you can only use your nutritional uh elements at, at a at a at a set rate and that's according to your metabolism after that they get excreted so you know that that's basically the truth if you have a well-rounded balanced diet then taking more omega-3 isn't necessarily going to help you much. And but because we're so hung up on performance and always looking for something else that might give us an edge and convincing ourselves we lead such busy lives that all we're eating is cardboard, you know, uh, the snake oil salesmen come in over the top and tell you, you know, anything from popping a multivitamin through to wearing some sort of holographic wristband is going to make you Superman. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just rubbish. Oh, absolutely. I mean, as a side point, if you take too many um, extra vitamins, aside from the fact that they'll be wasted, can you actually, are there any side effects to that? Oh, yeah, they damage you. Yeah? What yeah, sort of, what, yeah, what, there's what, toxicity. What, what, what sort of vitamins would, um, would, would be the, I guess, cause the most problems? Okay, um, I'm, I'm not going to just, just sort of say that out because anything in a high enough level will be toxic. Okay, even water will kill you if you drink too much of it. Any vitamin will kill you if you overdose on it, in much the same way that if you eliminate a particular diet, uh, vitamin from your diet, you're in just as much danger. Uh, I think that's where, you know, in the interest of good science, moderation is the key. Oh, well, that's... And don't, don't let anyone ever tell you better is, or more is better. No, fantastic response and a well, uh, well, well mediated response at, at that too. <laughs> I'm not going to get drained in the snake oil debates. <laughs> Absolutely, um, it, it's quite. Um, it is quite uh, fascinating that um, people can get really hung up on um, all this sort of stuff. You know, going going down. You know, you just like in Melbourne here uh, on Elizabeth Street. There's in the CBD. There's like you walk straight down there, and there's at least aside from the you know the pharmacy that are there selling it there's at least four from memory four or five different dedicated vitamin shops in the you yeah. know, in that area in that area yeah. just alone so and that you know and they're all, always busy and they're always uh, selling stuff so there might be a lot of malnourished people on Queen Street Ben I mean, <laughs> you know they might be eating recycled scraps or something like that you know maybe they need to pop into those vitamin shots maybe we should uh, give them a shot of oxygen canned oxygen <laughs> <laughs> when they're there as well, a bit of medical air just to uh, pump them up. Uh, just, do I detect a note of sarcasm? <laughs> That's just sarcasm. Malnutrition is a, malnutrition's a very serious point of view. Yeah. And all you have to do is, is look at parts of the world where there is malnutrition and yeah. you'll see you know, what the effects of not having a good diet are. We're very lucky in this country and most of the Western world that we have access to good diets and exceptionally good quality food. And uh, we should be making the most of that. And, and not being wasteful in our efforts to, uh, you know, basically fall for snake oil. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, one, one other point that I was just thinking of, um, with, um, with food processing and such, um, there's a, there is, would be a tendency to lose um, some natural vitamins within, um, within food and that sort of thing during that sort of process. So um, is, is it something to be mindful of when you're selecting the type of food that you, that you eat and, all that, and that sort of thing? I mean, 
ha I mean, it's not really like so, some label saying, um, you know, this is perfect or unless, well, unless you buy <laughs> organic or something like that. I mean, what do you think about that sort of thing? Look, uh, <clears throat> basically the rule of thumb is the food as fresh as possible. You know, there's, there's no other way. If food's fresh, um, then it's obviously going to be better for you. What is interesting, though, is that foods are snack frozen. You know, say like your peas or beans or anything you might get in the frozen food section in your supermarket have actually been shown to have a higher nutritional value. And that's purely because being snap frozen, they lose less of the uh, vitamins and nutrients inside them in uh, travelling. So while um, organic food is generally pretty good for you, purely because it doesn't travel as long and isn't stored as long before it gets to you. Mm. Um, you know, in some instances, uh, your snap frozen foods, uh, like pizza perhaps, could be quite good for you. Oh, that's interesting. So Jamie Oliver wasn't lying when he said, uh, go get uh, your frozen peas um, when you're making your 30 minute meal, or whatever it is that he's showing you then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it says it's fine. It's absolutely fine for you. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Um, so just, uh, I guess, just to wrap up um, what we're, we're saying here, um, uh, and tying it back to the to the article as well. Um, so, what like in terms of um, so is there just too much um, like uh, with the snake oil side of things? Is there too much um, of these sort of blurring the the whole issue as far as oh. what what you need and all that sort of stuff? Absolutely. Now you're an internet guru, Ben. You know how quickly we can spread a message. So if we came up with something like the, uh, let's say, orange detox diet and you wanted to get that around, all you need to do is get, you know, one of your big online sites that uh, follow these sorts of things, get a celebrity to try some orange detox diet. And away. Spread and, the word. And off do you, you go. Do you reckon we sell some? Oh, I think so. Just uh, start up a Facebook page and uh, away we go. We'll become millionaires straight away. <laughs> <laughs> Helps you lose weight and look better at the same time. Yeah. Guaranteed in seven days. Let me give you something to do next weekend. Eat nothing, drink orange detox. Enough said. <laughs> I think that... Look, uh, you know, I think this is the, the crucial element. Scientists generally don't communicate their results very well, particularly if they're complicated results, because, you know, they stick to the facts. They don't make up stories. And because of that, that's probably the hardest thing with science communication is communicating high-end research in a way that uh, the general public can understand. But unfortunately, that's where, uh, you know, you get people who, who jump in and, uh, you know, sell, sell complete myths. I mean, there's one really good example I know is a, is a group of female scientists, and, and this is dedication to science, and I don't know why they haven't, well, they can't peer publish their results on this, but they could put up a uh, web, web page, but there's no, no money in it. But I know that they uh, specifically got together in a group and they applied some very expensive face creams, okay, a whole range of them, but only to one side of their face for two years, two years. And then they evaluated their faces and found there was no difference on the side of the face that had the cream to the side of the face that had no moisturiser. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Big surprise, huh? <laughs> and yet you've got a whole lot of cosmetic companies telling you that in seven days you'll get results. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, we'll, f we'll finish up there. We're rapidly running out of time, but um, all always very interesting. Um, and I uh, want to send out a big thank you to, to Dave Just Rides for sending us in that uh, topic. And if anyone out there uh, has any uh, topics they'd like, to, uh, like us to talk about, um, feel free to fire them through. Yeah, um, we love them. Uh, but uh, looking ahead to uh, next week, um, now uh, the iPad 2's just been released and uh, we've uh, had a couple of Apple discussions before but uh, we're going to have a bit of a chat about um, the not just the iPad 2 but the, uh, the term that Steve Jobs um, quoted as the post-PC era and the ta in, es in essence the tablet era. So um, we'll uh, look forward to that, we'll post links for the episode soon so uh, until then we'll uh, catch you then. I'm off to throw my PC out the window. Bye Dave, <laughs> bye Ben. Ha <laughs> ha.